Hey Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All-American Casino Guide, a channel dedicated to providing you with all the tips, tricks, tutorials, and sometimes trivia you need to know about casinos and casino games. This week, we're going to be talking about famous gamer gals, so stay tuned. So let me start off by talking about one of my favorites. This woman, she really hung in there. She was born in 1844 during those wild west days, the good old days of gambling. And her name was Rule Lottie. Her real name, well, her less known real name, was Lottie Dino. And she lived in a time when women usually had to stay away from the gambling tables. And typically they weren't even allowed in saloons unless they were working there doing something else other than serving drinks or serving cards. Well, she grew up in Kentucky, where she learned the secrets to a good wager from her father. He taught her how to play roulette and how to bet on horses. And just as circumstances can do in life, they forced her into one direction. Well, Rulotti was forced to earn her family a living by gambling. Her looks and skill made her a popular player, and she ended up making a small fortune playing on riverboats and also as an in-house card player in San Antonio, Texas. According to legend, she beat the gunslinger and gambler Doc Holliday, who, just as a side note, also had a communicable disease and also was a part-time dentist. I think that's why they called him Doc Holliday. I think he actually was a practicing dentist, if, if memory serves. Anyway, this earned her a place as a character in the Western movie Gunfight at the OK Corral. Her gambling ways were also good for her health, as the small fortune she amassed at least partially helped her retire in style, and she was able to reach a nice, respectable age of 89, which is quite rare for a woman born before the Civil War. So next up is an even tougher version of Rulotti, and that's the one and only Poker Alice. She lived from 1851 to about 1930. Alice Ivers, as she was commonly known, uh, was from rural Devon, England, but her family actually emigrated to the United States when she was just a young gal. Her first husband apparently taught her how to play poker and she became a poker dealer. Later on in life, she used to smoke big cigars and beat male opponents with quite some regularity. In fact, she was so into the world of gambling that she eventually opened a saloon and poker hall in South Dakota. She called her saloon the Poker Palace, although it was rumored that it hosted other types of activities if you get my chips. Once, things got so rowdy on a Sunday, the traditional day of religious rest, that Alice had to shoot a man dead. Long story short, her conviction was overturned and she continued her success story as a gambler and successful businesswoman. You go, girl. The next lady on our list is Judy Bailey, commonly referred to as the first lady of gambling. Judy was born in 1913 and lived to the ripe old age of 58 when she died in 1971. Proof that essentially hard life can catch up on you. Uh, a name that deserves to be appreciated and respected in this video is, of course, Judy Bailey. In 1956, Judy and her husband opened a casino called the Hacienda in an area that was located between Las Vegas and Los Angeles, essentially halfway between the two locations. When her husband died, she came to be known as the first woman in gambling as she became the first woman in Nevada history to be the sole owner and operator of a casino, the one I mentioned, the Hacienda. Now let me put this into context. By the time Judy had come along and become the first female casino owner, Las Vegas already had its strip up and running. The first resort type casino that we associate with the strip had already been opened in 1941 by a guy named Thomas Hull. So right after World War II, Bugsy Siegel even came along with his gangster money and set up the posh Flamingo Hotel Casino, amongst many others. Now, the Flamingo, just while we're on the subject of Flamingo, happened to be the first hyper-opulent casino, but it also happened to be the first casino to offer a 24-hour buffet dinner. So, I mean, I guess on top of its hyper-opulence, it also was known for its hyper-gluttonousness. Anyway, uh, she managed to take care of her husband's debts after his death, and she was able to run a successful business, even being the first person to bring live Kino to the Strip. So, thanks. For our next entry on the list, let's turn to the game of Baccarat, or Baccarat, as it's commonly referred to by the 
less informed. Uh, this one goes to Shirley Brancucci, who happens to be the first female Baccarat dealer on the Las Vegas Strip, who became a Baccarat dealer at a time when females were typically only allowed to work at blackjack tables. Against the male player's initial opinions, she was installed as a dealer and remained to be very headstrong, wanting to stand out as the first female to ever deal Baccarat. Once players got to know her, she was loved, and she became a very popular Baccarat dealer in no time flat. No list of female gamblers would be complete without the next entry on our list, and that is the infamous Annette Oberstad, the youngest World Series of Poker champion ever. Now, in modern times, we've had a number of spectacular female poker players, but Annette holds the record of being the youngest when she won the World Series of Poker Europe in 2007. She actually began playing poker as a teen. That's not good. Don't, do not play poker as a teen. I do not recommend that. Initially, she began playing online, but she took those skills to live tables, making it to several final tables on several occasions. Last but definitely not least, I'm going to mention Vanessa Selbst, one of the most famous female gamblers of poker that has ever been. She has earned over 10 million US dollars during her career, which is made up of three World of Series poker bracelets, so essentially she has more poker bracelets than she has wrists, and of course the final table of the World Poker Tour events, as well as these other numerous poker tournaments that she's played all over the world. Since 2018 though, she's become less active playing uh, in less and less games, but she still has quite a head start to other female poker players out there when it comes to an amassed earnings total. So essentially, in my opinion, once the only records you have left to beat are your own, it's time to get out. So that wraps up our list of famous female gamblers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's any female gamblers that we failed to mention, go ahead and leave them as a comment down below. And guys, while you're at it, clickety-clack that like button, punch that subscribe button, ring-a-ding-ding that notification bell, and make sure to make sweet, sweet love to that share button. And if guys, if you happened to want to try your luck at any of the games that we have mentioned in this video, make sure to check out the videos on our channel. We have a number of great tutorials and beginner guides to a variety of games like poker, blackjack, baccarat, and even roulette. My name's Dominic. This has been the All-America Casino Guide reminding you, play responsibly.